Big tech companies worked closely with Obama, first during his presidential run and later on as they traversed the power corridors of Washington without much issue. Today, that era is back, with Biden all set to enter the White House. Obama's 2008 campaign relied heavily on social media to lift him out of the wilderness. Those efforts were in part led by a founder of Facebook, Chris Hughes, who was so enchanted by Obama that he left the startup to join the future president's strategy team. When the Obama administration started operating from the White House, the seemingly big tech giants of today were still finding their footing in the global landscape. But they helped Obama overwhelm his opponent and win the election, especially Google, which bagged 45% of Obama's $16 million spent on digital ads in 2008. Such was Obama's thirst to infiltrate the nascent internet market that he forged deeper and intimate connections with Silicon leaders like Steve Jobs, Jobs, Bill Gates and Mark Zuckerberg, often inviting them and giving unrestricted and unfettered access to them to the power corridors of Washington. Once it felt like the entire Bay Area and its wealthy CEOs were pen pals with Obama, where they wrote mushy letters expressing their mutual desires for each other. Obama routinely pushed policy that pleased the tech savvy. The rocky debut of healthcare.gov, the online insurance marketplace that cost more than $600 million to build and crashed almost immediately after it went live, was a classic example of Obama trusting the tech giants a tad too much. Obama used these tech giants as a tool for foreign diplomacy as well. Not many know, but Obama took Airbnb CEO Brian Chesky to Cuba as an economic endorsement of the revolutionary powers of startups to change the world, the same communist country with which the US had embittered ties for decades. Nobody is denying that Trump used Facebook and other social media platforms effectively to come to power in 2016, but once he entered the White House, he started making policies to keep the big tech in check. And thus, angered by his stand, the tech world started the long, arduous four-year process of vilifying Trump, muzzling the voice of conservatives and occasionally censoring his social media content, which reached a crescendo after his electoral defeat. A swift, unilateral ejection of Trump from the digital sphere by the tech giants and that too, collectively. Now, reported by TFI, the Biden administration is now expected to name Renata Hesse to head the antitrust division at the US Department of Justice. Her alleviation to the position is a lobbying move engineered by none other than the Democrats in collusion with big tech companies. Renata was the former Justice Department official under the presidentship of Barack Obama and has even worked alongside Senator Ted Cruz to defend Google a decade ago. Not just Google, she had also advised Amazon during the acquisition of grocery chain Whole Foods that was valued at more than $13 billion. The appointment of Renata Hesse raises serious conflict of interest issues, but it shouldn't come as a surprise to anyone. Biden is simply following the blueprint set by Obama to woo the big tech companies to keep them in his pocket. With such a predecessor who remained thick as thieves with the Silicon Valley companies, it was only imperative that Biden would take his lead. Any hope of regulating the internet and its players that was ignited by Trump has been quashed by the election of Biden. Big Tech's power to unilaterally influence election results is an alarming prospect. The Obama era saw collusion between the government and Big Tech, and the Big Tech companies grew exponentially at the cost of people's privacy. Post-Trump, that era is back.